Hi, my name is Duncan, and today I'm going to be talking about Angular 2 in 15 minutes. So, as I said, my name is Duncan Hunter. I'm a software architect at SSW, and I'm also an Angular 2 online bootcamp mentor. And I'm also a rock climber. If I'm not coding, I'm usually out climbing, and you can see me here climbing uh, one of my favorite pieces of rock in Yosemite, California. So what are we going to cover off in the next 15 minutes? We're going to talk about what is Angular, why even bother with Angular 2, the eight main parts of Angular 2, and the question on everyone's minds is when is it going to be ready? So Angular 2 is a development platform for building mobile and desktop and web applications. So it's a platform. So it's it's... It's no longer what they were saying before. They were saying before Angular 1 is a heroic web framework. And now they're calling themselves a platform, which is really interesting. So if you want to build mobile or desktop or web, Angular 2 has you covered. So why use Angular 2? Well, it's six years old and it's still growing. Angular 1 had 1.1 million views in October last year. And last month, Angular 1, the Angular 1 docs, their documentation website, had 1.3 million views, so it's growing. And Angular 2, at angular.io, the Angular 2 website for its documentation, had 330,000 views. So Angular 2 has huge traction, even though it's still in beta. And it's cross-platform. So if you want to build web, you can do it. If you want to build mobile web and make a responsive version of your web application, you can do that too. If you want to write for Android or iOS or even Windows phones and have a native app, you can do that with Angular 2 with things like Ionic or NativeScript. And if you want to write a desktop application in Angular 2, you can use a tool called Electron for Windows, Mac or Linux. And also Angular 2 is working together with some of the other big giants in the industry. So you're seeing the Angular team from Google and the TypeScript team from Microsoft come together to make Angular 2 more awesome, which is a huge step forward towards collaborating and making the web uh, more standardized. Angular 2 is going to be much more performant. So Angular, Angular 2 is already two and a half times faster at rendering than Angular 1 and 4.2 times faster at re-rendering than Angular 1. And their goal is that when you generate your code and deploy it, it'll be five times faster than Angular 1. So why, why is Angular 2 going to be better? If you take all these things, well, there's four main points. It's going to be cleaner code. It's going to be using TypeScript and the new syntax. You're going to write much more powerful applications. You're going to be able to write what you couldn't have written in Angular 1. It's going to be faster, in particular for the web. And it's going to be much simpler. If you're learning Angular 2 and you don't know Angular 1, you're going to save yourself a bunch of headache because Angular 2 is easier to learn and use. So there's eight main parts to an Angular 2 application you've got to get your head around. And we're going to run through those now. So there's modules, components, templates, metadata, data binding, services, directives, and dependency injection. Now these are just a lot of words on a page. So let's look at it as a, in a diagram and then in some code. So you have a component, and each component has to have a view. It has to have a HTML template. They're joined together. And you join them together with the metadata. Metadata is like information that you give to Angular to say, hey, these parts, these are all related together. And you have binding, both property binding and event binding, between your template and your component. And then once you've got all of that working, you have services. So services is for using reusable code. So let's say you want to inject uh, some reusable logic from one service into 10 different components. You can do that with dependency injection and services. And then you have directives, which are, and they could be the built-in ones, like ng model from Angular that allows you to do two-way data binding in, in your template, or custom directives you write yourself. And all of these different parts could be one big module or they could be all separate modules. And Angular 2 uses the new ECMAScript 6 module syntax and that's a big part of Angular 2. So once you have one of these components, you could say that you have a top level component. You have the very first component you write and then you might write two other components that live inside of that component. And then you start to get 
what we call a component tree. And then those two components inside of the top level component might have their own components and so on and so on. So you end up with components in components in components. So we have this parts here in this diagram, but what's that look like in code? So I'm going to pop over to Visual Studio Code and we're going to have a look at making our very first component and some of the binding and services. So I'm going to come into this source file and I'm going to make an app.component.ts and this is an already working application but I just have deleted the components and all the logic for the Angular part of this app. So, and it's already running, the server's running, it's already running the browser. So I just want to show you these parts working together in, in a component. So if I want anything in Angular, I need to import it. So we're using modules. So I'm going to import from Angular 2 slash core the component class. So once I have that, you can see TypeScript telling me I made a mistake there, which is a red squiggly, then I can use it. So once I have it, I can come down here and go at component and it takes an object. So this at component section is the metadata I spoke about. It's the stuff that glues together everything and lets Angular know that this TypeScript class that I have here called app component is just a plain old TypeScript class, but when I put this metadata on it, which I'm about to write inside of this component, let's Angular know, hey, this class, app component, is actually an Angular component. And the key ones we need is a selector, and that selector tells us what the element will look like in the DOM. And I'm going to call it my-app. So whenever I see an element in the DOM, or in my HTML called my-app, that is representing this component and it will put my component in its place. So if we look at our index.html page, I have a my app component and that my app is what is referenced here. So it's going to put the component, the HTML for this component right here. Now we haven't written that yet, so let's do it. Let's give a bit more space here and let's make a template. And the template is where you put the HTML. And I could put in a separate file, but I'm going to make it inline for now. And I'm going to use the new ECMAScript 6 backticks. So that's multi-line string literals. So in here, I'm just going to have a label called first name. And I'm going to initial, I'm just going to put in here an input box, an empty input box. So currently we have our working component, but we haven't bootstrapped our application. We just have one component, it's all we've got. So we need to bootstrap this component as our top level component. So let's make a new file and I'm going to call it main.ts. You could call it whatever you want. And I'm going to import from angular to slash platform slash browser the bootstrap function. So once I have that, and you can see it's complaining again, I spelled something wrong. We have that, then we can use it. So I can go bootstrap, here is my app component, and can you please bootstrap my application and pass it in as a top level component. But we don't have it yet, we have to actually get it. So let's do that. So let's import it as well. So we import from my app.component. the app component. So now Angular has everything it needs and it's complaining here because I've got a spelling mistake in down in here, app component, like so, then it's all working. So now everything's running, we can pop over to the browser and refresh the page and we have our very first working Angular app with just some HTML on the page. But we, nothing happens when we type in here. So let's go get some property and event binding happening in our component. So let's give us a bit more room. And let's come down and put our first property and I'm gonna call it first name. And I'm gonna set that type of that property to a string. And it's gonna be initialized to just my name, Duncan. So then up here I can bind using Angular 2 syntax using property binding to that the value property 
of this input box and I'm going to bind to it the value I just have written, the first name. So it's saying bind to the value property of this input, the first name property on my model, which is just Duncan. So if we pop back over and we refresh now, we see that Duncan is populated and everything's working. And if I want to do some data binding, I can still use interpolated values like Angular 1 and I could put my first name in here and we would see that it's also binding that first name onto the page. But they're not bound together because there's no two-way binding by default. So let's use our first Angular directive and let's use some event binding. So the square brackets is property binding and the round brackets is event binding. And they call this a banana in a box because it looks like you stuffed a banana in a box. And then we're going to use the ng model directive with Angular. So what this is saying is I'm going to bind onto the model, the first name object on the model, uh, to this input with this square brackets. And then I'm going to listen to any events that are changed with these round brackets. And using ng model, I'm going to update the first name property on my model. So now when we come back, can refresh the page and type and you can see we've got two-way data binding. Very cool and easy to do. But there's one last piece in this picture that we haven't done yet. So we've just used directives and we've got a component. We're using some binding and metadata and a template. But let's quickly get my first name from a service and use dependency injection so we can see all of these eight main parts working together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to initialize my value to be empty. We'll refresh the browser, browser to make sure that's working. So first name's empty, but the two-way data binding's working. And then I'm going to come back over and I'm going to add a app.service.ts. And inside, uh, not a folder, let's add a file, app.service.ts. Inside of here, I'm just going to export a plain old TypeScript class called app service and it's going to have the world's most simplest function ever called get name and that get name function just returns my name which is Duncan. So once we have that we can use that service in our app component. So in here if I want it like everything I need to import it so I need to import app.service and I also need to register this service with Angular. So to do that, we have providers in our metadata here. So in here, I'm going to put the app service like so. So this just registers that service with Angular and this just makes that service available to my component. But we need to actually use dependency injection to get an instance of that service inside of this component. So I need a constructor and that constructor is going to have a variable I'm going to call app service and it's going to be of type app service like so. So we're initializing the value of app service so we can get a handle of the service. Then we're going to have a function down here called get name which we can call from our component and all it does is it goes this dot app service dot get name and we'll go return the name the string Duncan but we don't want to just return the string Duncan we want to actually bind it onto the first name field so let's do that so when it comes back we're just going to take the name Duncan the string from the service and pop it on the first name property but when the app loads no one's calling this function so what we want to do in the constructor is we want to call that function so what's happening here is we're saying, hey, whenever app component is instantiated, can you call the get name function? And the get name function will then call our service and bind the return value of Duncan onto the first name. So if we come back into the view or into the browser and refresh, we should see that the whole site has crashed, which is not really what I was expecting to see. So I've got a feeling that our server has stopped running. So I'm just going to kill it and start it again. 
And this is just going to take a second to kick off the browser again and run it. So it's going to hijack my page, but while we're waiting, uh, we can just run through this again very quickly. So what we've just done is we've made a service, we've registered it with Angular with the providers in our metadata, and then we're using dependency injection inside of our constructor to inject and get that service. So now you can see that the page is reloaded, we get first name is being uh, of Duncan being bound to that box from the value from our service and we've got two-way data binding. So that's really cool. We've covered off these eight main parts and now we can think about making more components and ending up with this component tree we discussed before. But before I finish, I really wanted to finish off talking about when is Angular 2 going to be ready and rather than me telling you what I've heard and what people are talking about, I thought I'd play you a very quick video of Brad Green, the product manager for Angular 2, talking about when it'll be ready uh, very recently at a conference in America. Um, and so the last question um, that's on everyone's mind is release date. When, when can we expect it and uh, when should people start building production applications in Angular 2? So we at Google, we're already building production applications and have already shipped some in Angular 2. So unless there's something you're waiting for, um, which there could be, IETNN and animations would be the two big things, I think. If you don't need those, I think you can start deploying already, but certainly you can start building your apps on Angular 2 already. Um, when's it going to ship? Uh, I actually don't know. So we're, we're actually going to be driven by the features and the quality rather than a particular date because we could say, ah, it's done now, and it, you know, it wouldn't be what people want. But what we did is we think we're pretty close. So we built a milestone on GitHub that you can track, and you can see how close we're getting. And we're hopefully not too far away. Okay, great. Um. So that's the, the word straight from the Google team. Uh, saying that they think it's a great time to get started building with Angular 2 and deploying if you don't need those things. So this is the burn down or the milestones that he spoke about. And if you really want to see when Angular 2 is going to be hit release candidate, then you should be watching this on the Angular GitHub site. And they're about 38% complete with 62 open issues uh, as of yesterday. So what did we cover? We had a look at what is Angular. We spoke about why Angular 2 uh, is going to be awesome and the eight main parts of an Angular 2 application. And we heard a little bit from Brad Green about when Angular 2 is going to be ready. So I'm super excited for the rest of the day. I can't wait to sit here from our other presenters and I can't wait to get my hands on the keyboard and hack away and see what we can make today. So cheers, thanks for watching and I'll pass you over to Chris.